you know the song, though, please feel free to join. Um, and then when it's time for us to sing the theme song, then we will be familiar with it also. Okay. our theme song. What do you think? Can I get an amen if it, you like it? Yeah? Okay. Let's do it together now, right? From the top. Come 
cannot own. find what this world cannot own. Now find your joy here complete. Come and find your joy here complete. Taste the living water, never thirst again. Rest here in His wondrous peace. Oh, the Hello, welcome. We are so glad that you are here this evening. We are so happy to begin with this series of lectures that we have every night about searching the truth. And every night we will go and discuss one of the different truths that we can find in the Bible, and we will learn more about important things for our own life. The guest speaker that we have for these uh, lectures is Paul Douglas. Some of you already know him, but if not, uh, he was born in Jamaica to Cuban parents, and he knows a little bit of Spanish. He can communicate in Spanish. Also, that's what is really good for me. He is married to Rachel, and they have three kids. He lives now in Miami and Washington. I know that he's moving all around the world. Yesterday, we were uh, talking, and with the world map, we were seeing what are the countries that he had visited. He had visited more of the countries that we are from, then he knows almost all the world. He travels a lot for work, and we are so glad that you are here with us this uh, week. Uh, we would like to begin this evening also to continue this program with a prayer. I invite you, if you want, to stand with us as we pray together and ask God that lead us during this program. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so glad to have the opportunity to meet this evening to learn more about you, help us to have our 
hearts and our minds open to receive the message. Help us to go to the Bible and find this important truth for our life. That is not something just about a book, but that becomes relevant in our lives and that we can learn each day one more and more about you and also that we can share that we know but especially that we can reflect your character with the people that is around us. We ask a special blessing for the speaker, that you can use him, that uh, he can really uh, give the message that you have for us during this week. We ask this in your name. Amen. Uh, now we will uh, continue our program. We have been learning already the theme song, but we will sing one more time the theme song that we will be singing every night. Then now we'll have the theme song, but before we go to that, I want to introduce one thing that is important. Every night we will have a time to, for Q&A. Then it means if you have questions regarding the today's lecture, you, we will have some uh, cards that we can respond. Also, there will be an electronic option that you can respond if you have questions. And tomorrow, we will take some time, or well, not we, but uh, Pastor Paul Douglas will take some time to respond to your questions. And if you have any questions regarding the topic of tonight, please write it down. We will give you some cards, but also there will be a QR code that you will see, and you can send your questions, and tomorrow, he will respond into the questions of today's topic. And every night, we will have that time at the beginning of the program some time to respond to the questions that you could have about the topic of every presentation. Then it's important that we want to hear also your feedback. In the card is also the possibility if you want to know more about a specific topic, if you would like to have a visit or you want that we can pray for you, please let us know because we want to do this interactive. If you have something, if you need something, if you want to know more about something, let us know and we will try to interact and to have this in a, in a way that you can also learn and feel that this is really relevant for you. Then now we will continue uh, singing together. We will have again the theme song, and after that we will go into the topic of today that is truth about the kingdom, kingdom of this world. Then it's a very interesting topic that we will learn more today. Let's all stand. Jesus, come you ancient soul now and see, there is perfect love and comfort in your tears, rest here in his wondrous peace, oh the goodness, the goodness of Jesus, satisfied he is May it become what may 
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that we can come here on this evening to look at your word and find the truth in your word. We ask, O oh God, that you would open our minds so we can hear and open our hearts so we can believe. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How are you, everyone? Did you have a good rest? A Sabbath afternoon rest, and now we're ready to look at God's Word together. It's truly my delight to be with you. We'll be having eight of these sessions tonight. We will look at the truth about the kingdoms of this world. Then tomorrow night, after the No Drive Sunday, I heard about the No Drive Sunday, we will talk about the truth about the future. I guess I'm sure if you're like me, you're interested in knowing what's going to happen next and what's about <clears throat> to happen tomorrow. Then on Monday, we'll look at the truth about God's law. Then on Tuesday, the truth about baptism, new life in Jesus Christ. Then the truth about the Sabbath on Wednesday. On Thursday, the truth about death, what that means to us. Then on Friday, the truth about God's end time plan. And then on Sabbath, just like we did today, we'll open God's word to look about the truth about heaven. So that will be our time together over the next seven days. Now, the style, and I'm glad you all came and bunched together because I wasn't going to stand up there and preach to you. We're going to go through God's word together. Is that okay? <clears throat> Is that okay? So I'm going to invite you, if you have your Bibles on your phones or if you have your printed Bibles, to pull out your Bibles so we can walk through God's Word together. <clears throat> so we can walk through God's Word together. And tonight I'm going to invite you to, to turn in your Bibles to Daniel chapter 2, the book of Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to spend our time in that chapter today. Later on, we will look at some other verses in, in the book of Revelation and Isaiah. But our focus is going to be on Daniel chapter 2. So if you have it on your phones or in your printed word, those of you who are online and at home, I encourage you also to follow along with us as we look at God's word and Search for the truth about the kingdoms of this world. When I was flying over here on Thursday, and by the way, somebody asked me, have I gotten over jet lag as yet? Well, I live in a constant state 
of jet lag. So I never get over jet lag. I'm just always jet lag. But when I was flying over here, I, I noticed a, a, a young couple, and I could tell for sure it was their first child. I could tell for sure it was their first child. I remember the first child just doting over that child and wanted to make sure everything is correct. And the husband, he, he wanted to sit close to his wife, but there was no seat. He wanted to sit close to his wife because he wanted to be close to the child. I'm not so sure he wanted to be close to the wife. He wanted to be close to his newborn son. And, and I, I just watched them with, with just amazement and joy. But then came the concern. Here's this innocent child coming into this world and such a troubled world, such a challenging time, the ability to keep this child safe, the, the ability to, to ensure that the newborn child will grow up and be able to have a life, a life that is full, a life that is complete. So as I looked at their joy, I also had concerns to myself and says, they have no idea of the challenging times that are ahead with their young child. My children are a lot older now, but I still have my concerns over my children in terms of the lives and the times in which we live. What will the future hold for them? And as we look around this world and we question what is truth and, and how do we know what is fact from fiction, we only have one source of truth and that's the word of God. And tonight, as we look in the Word of God, we will find in it the promises and the, the information that we can hold dear and recognize that God's Word is timeless and God's Word is true, and we can trust in God's Word. Well, turn, let's, well, you will see it on the screen and you can turn in your Bibles. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, and I invite you, if you have time, if you have a piece of paper, write down these texts so you can even go revisit these texts in your spare time. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29, here's what it says. The secret things belong unto the... Come with me, we're going to do this together. The secret things belong unto the... Our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Again, the secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Over 2,500 years. That's 2,500 years. Over 2,500 years. God revealed one of his secrets to one of the pagan kings at the time. And the message is revealed to us even today. And as we look through that message in Daniel chapter 2, we are able to tell how correct and how effective and how true the word of God is. So tonight, we're going to look in Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> in a vision that was given to a pagan king that was written down for us. And history has proven this prophecy that was given to this pagan king. Now this week, I want to assume and I would like us to believe that we hold this Bible dear and true. So if it's in the Bible, we're going to believe it, correct? If it's not in the Bible, we're not going to believe it. So let's say this together. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. If it disagrees with the Bible, it's not for me. Let's try that once, one more time. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. If it disagrees with the Bible, it is not for me. So let us start in. So Daniel chapter 2. Let's go back in time here, just about 600 years before Christ was even born. One night, the king, his name is Nebuchadnezzar, and you'll find this in Daniel chapter 2, the king of this ancient Babylonian empire, he had a dream. And when he woke up, 
This chapter tells us he did not remember the dream. And he was troubled about this dream. And he had some sense that this dream that he, he got was a very significant dream. And it must be only God that has given him this dream. But he was troubled. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 2 and verse 1. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 1. And it goes on to say, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Have you ever had a dream in the night and you've got up in the morning, you can't remember, but something in your spirit says something is not right. What was that dream? Many a times I have known I was dreaming something, but by the time I woke up for the morning, it has been forgotten as to what I dreamed or dreamt. So here Nebuchadnezzar finds himself in this situation. He has dreamed a very powerful dream. But yet still, when the morning breaks, he cannot remember what he has dreamt. So he calls now to his wise men and his sorcerers and his magicians and the Chaldeans who were noted for the abilities to understand astronomy and astrology and to try to tell and predict the future. So he, he calls out to them and asks of them, tell me the dream. But not only tell me the dream, but tell me the interpretation of the dream. In verse 4 it says, O king, Live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will give you the interpretation. But you see, Nebuchadnezzar places them in a very difficult position. They were not in the bedroom. They were not in his mind. They know nothing of this dream. But yet still, Nebuchadnezzar calls out to his trusted advisors, his magicians, his astrologers, and say, tell me the dream that I had. But beyond that, also tell me the interpretation of the dream. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 10. The wise men respond to Nebuchadnezzar and say, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king this matter. And I agree with them. How could you tell somebody the dream that they had, much less tell them the interpretation? of the dream. So they speak to him and say, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king of this matter. Only God in heaven can accurately and precisely predict the future. So Daniel, Daniel, who was a captive in Babylon, but Daniel who had risen in the ranks and was one of the wise men, Daniel heard of the king's concern. Daniel heard that his own life was in danger because Nebuchadnezzar now believes that since they cannot tell me my dream nor the interpretation of my dream, they would be put to death. Daniel heard of this and he asked the executioner, what is going on? Why am I now subject to death? What really is going on? And then he is told the story of Nebuchadnezzar who has had a dream. Nebuchadnezzar who really does not know what the dream means and he's asking of his wise men, tell me not only my dream, but the interpretation of my dream. So Daniel, he came to Nebuchadnezzar and said, let me go to my God and I will pray to my God and my God will reveal to me the dream that you had. And he will also reveal to me the interpretation of the dream. So Daniel did that. He went and he prayed to his God. He prayed to his God that God would reveal the mysteries that he had revealed unto Nebuchadnezzar. And also the interpretation. And when he woke up, Daniel not only had the dream. But Daniel also had the interpretation. And here in verse 23, he says, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and you have given me might. I thank you 
and praise you. O God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and you have given me might. And then Daniel, he went to the king to tell him about his dreams. In verse 28, I hope you're following in your Bibles or on your phones here in the room or online. Verse 28, there is a God, Daniel says, in heaven who reveals secrets. And he, God, has made known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what will happen in the latter days. He has made known to the king what will happen in the latter days. So this prophecy in Daniel chapter 2 will take us through all the kingdoms of this earth. From Babylon to Media Persia to Greece and to Rome and to the divided kingdoms of Europe today. There is a God. In heaven who reveals secrets and he has made known to the king what will be in the latter days. Even in the days that we live today. So Daniel chapter 2 and verse 31. You, O king, Daniel says, were watching and behold a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you, and its form was awesome. Here, Daniel is start to tell him about the dream that he had. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. Verse 32 and verse 33. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. And he goes on in verse 34. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them into pieces. Verse 35. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So here Daniel comes in to the chamber of the king and tells him about his dream, exactly as how he dreamt it. And now he goes on to tell him about the interpretation of the dream. Only God could have done this. Only God could have done this to his servant who prayed to him and he revealed it to Daniel, not the magicians, not the Chaldeans, not the sorcerers, not the astrologers, not the astronomers, but to his servant, Daniel. He tells him the dream and now provides the interpretation of the dream from the kingdoms then of this earth, even unto today. In verse 36, this is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are king of kings. Well, not the king of kings, because we know who the king of kings is, right? You, O king, are a king of kings. You are this head of gold. And the head of gold represented Babylon, that kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, at the time that they reigned from 605 B.C. to 539 B.C., the head of gold. Well, why was the head of gold the, 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 the symbol for this kingdom? Well, we can look. Nebuchadnezzar established one of the most fabulous kingdoms at the time. They had gold everywhere. They had hanging gardens. It was the, it was the wealthiest kingdom on earth at the time. It was a wonder to the world, those gardens that existed there. 
And as you compared Babylon to even some of the ancient cities of Rome, Babylon was 10 miles or 16 kilometers in circumference. Rome was just six miles and Athens just four miles. Babylon was a big city, full and filled with gold. Well, let's even look at the temple of Marduk that is in this city of Babylon. It was 300 feet high or 91 meters high. And inside of that temple, it was overlaid with gold. Outside of that temple, it was overlaid with blue glazed tile, a beautiful city. Inside the temple also, it contained 18 tons of gold or 16,000 kilograms of gold. Even the image that was set up to one of the gods that was there, that image alone was eight and a half tons or 7,700 kilograms of gold. No wonder, no wonder that gold was used as the image to symbolize this kingdom of Babylon. He goes on in verse 32, its chest and arms of silver. So after Babylon, another kingdom would arise. After Babylon arose the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. And the Medes and the Persians would overthrow the Babylonians. So you don't have to guess about all of this. Even if you look in history books, you can track the movements and the rise and fall of kingdoms of this world. Daniel chapter 2, verse 39. And after you shall arise another kingdom. Now we find, even in the history books, that the Medes and Persians under the... Under the, um, under the under the guidance or the leadership of Cyrus, they were overthrown. Or the King Belshazzar or Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian empire were overthrown by the Medes and Persians. While they were in a party, while they were really just lavishly enjoying themselves, a hand, as the Bible says in Daniel, a hand wrote on the wall these words, many. God has numbered your kingdom and has finished it. The other word was tekel. You have been weighed in the balances and found wanton. The other word was peris. Your kingdom is divided and has been given to the Medes and the Persians. Daniel has provided not only the dream, but he has provided the interpretation of the dream. Cyrus was that person who had the leadership of the combined armies of the Medes and the Persians. God actually named Cyrus even 150 years before he was born. In the book of Isaiah, it, this is what it says. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and to loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors that the gates will not be shut. Even before Cyrus was born, God wrote in his word about Cyrus and what he would do. So this Bible that we have, this word that we have, it's no ordinary book. Prophecies from ancient times, even to this day, and even the history books, can confirm what these prophecies have said. So Cyrus and his armies, they diverted the river Euphrates and made sure it would flow in a different way. And they walked on the dry ground underneath the kingdom of Babylon so they could defeat that kingdom. Then Daniel goes on in verse 39. We're going through Daniel chapter 2. Then another kingdom, a third kingdom, of bronze which shall rule over the earth. A third empire. This third empire is the empire of Greece. The Greek army in all their, their bronze, in all of their army, in terms of their wealth and in terms of their strength, they overcame the Medes and the Persians. So in Daniel chapter 2, 
The first kingdom we have, say it with me, is Babylon. Then the second kingdom is Media Persia. Then the third kingdom is Greece. Babylon associated with the head of gold. Media Persia with the arms and chest of silver. And Greece with thighs of bronze. So that's the third kingdom. But he goes on to say in Daniel chapter 2, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Historian Edward Gibbon wrote this in the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. The images of gold. Now he was not a Christian. He was not a believer. He's not reading any scripture from, from Daniel that was written thousands of years ago. He's just writing as a historian about the rise and the fall or the decline of the Roman Empire. And this is what he says. The images of gold, of silver, or brass that might serve to represent the nations and their kings were success, successively broken by the iron monarchy of Rome. So what was there before in terms of Babylon? What was there before in terms of Media Persia? What was there before in terms of Greece was successfully and successfully broken by the iron monarchy of Rome. The fourth kingdom that Daniel talks about in Daniel chapter 2. And this Rome, as you see here, spread out over all of Europe going from the Atlantic all the way to the Euphrates, from the northern sea, even down to the Sahara. This, my friends, is a map of the kingdom of Rome. The fourth kingdom. Babylon, the first one. Media Persia, the second one. Greece, the third one. And Rome, the fourth one. In Rome, and in the days of Rome, Jesus Christ was born in the days of Rome. In the days of Rome, Jesus and Christ with his parents, Mary and Joseph, they had to flee into Egypt to get away from the oppression of Rome. And in the days of Rome, Jesus Christ, our Savior, was crucified on Calvary's cross. So Rome, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Persian Gulf. Rome, from the Northern Sea to the Sahara Desert. Rome, the fourth kingdom that had trampled all other kingdoms before it. Daniel chapter 2, as we continue now in verse 41. As he continues to interpret the dream for King Nebuchadnezzar. And here's what he says. Whereas you saw the feet and the toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. The Bible not only predicts that there would not be a fifth ruling empire, no other empire would come after Rome. Not a single world empire as was Rome or Babylon or Media Persia or Greece. Not a single empire. But that Europe then would be a divided place where iron and clay would not mix together. And we can find this in the history books. We can find this in the history books as Rome fell and the rise and decline of Rome and the, the, the barbarian tribes divided up Europe into these 10 different tribes. The Anglo-Saxon, the Franks and the Ostrogoths and the Alemannes and the Lombardies and the Heruli and the Vist Vistrogoths and the Vandals all dividing up the place of Europe. Not a fifth kingdom, but 10 different tribes and 10 different locations divided up throughout Europe. The Bible, my friends, 
is the true word of God. Many years ago, predicting the kingdoms of this world. Even the history books can confirm what the Bible has said. There was a man who once asked a pastor, how can I know that the Bible is true? This man was in Europe when he asked this question, and the pastor said to him, you are standing on it. You are standing on the truth of the Bible. And when he took him through Daniel chapter 2, he understood the veracity of God's word. He understood the truth of God's word. That over 2,500 years ago, a prophecy could be provided that told us about kingdoms then and the kingdoms of this world today. What a God we serve. What a mighty God we serve that gives us a record, not only of our past, but points us to a future that is secure in him. We go on to Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, and he says, as he speaks to the king, as you saw, iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. But throughout history, many have tried to unite Europe. Napoleon even tried to marry in in such a way so he could have a political union between France and Austria. But Daniel chapter 2 verse 43 says, they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. We're talking about the word of God written more than 2,500 years ago that today even the history books can confirm what happened. Charles V, he tried to unite Europe. He failed. Charlemagne, he tried to unite Europe. He failed. Napoleon, he tried to unite Europe. He failed. And if you look and has been recorded in the journals of Napoleon, here is what is written. There will be what? One Europe. There will be one currency. There will be one language. There will be one government over all of Europe. That is found in the very journal of Napoleon. But when Napoleon was defeated in 1815, here's what he said after the defeat. God Almighty, God Almighty is too much for me. God Almighty, in his attempt to have one Europe, one currency, one language, one government over all of Europe to create another kingdom, he had to admit in defeat that God Almighty is too much for me. Daniel 2 and verse 43 again, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another. So now, since 1476 to the present day, we have a divided Europe. No matter what men may say, or what you might see down the road, or what might be called a European commission and a nation, we have a divided Europe, just as the word of God said. Indeed, this prophecy has proven true. Europe has been divided and will remain divided through the centuries of time. Many world leaders, they tried. Napoleon did. He failed. Charlemagne did. He failed. Charles V did. He failed. But also, as you look at Hitler and his fiery speeches, he tried to say one people, one empire, one leader, and he also failed. My dear friends, this prophecy, an ancient prophecy, an old prophecy, 
more than 2,500 years ago, declares that the days of the Roman Empire, Europe would never be united. This old prophecy talked about the kingdom of Babylon, that it would fall. This old prophecy talked about the kingdom of Medo-Persia, that it would fall. This old prophecy talked about the kingdom of Greece, and it would fall. This old prophecy talked about the kingdom of Rome, and it would fall, just like the word of God says. But let's look, my friends, quickly and carefully of what men will continue to try to do. Revelation 17, verse 12 through 14. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdoms as yet. Notice I mentioned to you that Rome was divided into ten groups of ten um, groups of persons, the Vandals, the, the Astrogoths, and the Heruli, and the, and the others that I mentioned to you. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdoms as yet. But they receive authority for one hour. One hour. This is Revelation, a prophetic book. They receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. One hour means just a very short time. Just a very short time. They are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast. So my friends, as you recognize this flag, as we sit here in Brussels in the, in the capital of what is considered the capital of Europe, as we sit at the location where they have the parliament of the European state, this flag that is a symbol of many voices on one people. In this union that talks about a single currency, the result of an effort to have one currency common to all of Europe, Revelation tells us that there will be an attempt to unite all of the peoples politically and even for a time religiously, there will be an attempt. And even when war and conflict and, and famine and crises might happen to even push that idea along, they will try their best to unite. But the word of God is telling us that it will fail. It will fail. First kingdom, Babylon. Second kingdom, Media Persia. Third kingdom, Greece. Fourth kingdom, Rome. The rise of Rome. The fall of Rome. And a divided Europe demonstrated by the iron and the clay mixing together. But they will attempt, as Revelation says, to unite politically, to unite religiously, and try to make war against that lamb. But the lamb will overcome them, as it is said in Revelation 17, 12 through 14. For he is the Lord of lords. He is the Lord of lords. He is the King of kings. And those who are with him are called chosen and they are called faithful. So yes, there is Babylon. Yes, there is Media Persia. Yes, there is Greece. Yes, there is Rome. Yes, there is a divided Europe. But there is also in Daniel chapter 2, as he tells of this dream, and he gives the interpretation, there is this stone that is cut out of a mountain. There is this stone that is coming towards the feet of these divided kingdoms. There is this stone, as pointed out in the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. He said in verse 34, you watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them into pieces. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. Our God, our God of heaven will set up his kingdom which will never be destroyed. Won't you say amen? amen. So we have the kingdom of Babylon that rose and fell. 
We have the kingdom of Media Persia that rose and fell. We have the kingdom of Greece that rose and fell. We have the kingdom of Rome that rose and fell. We have the divided Europe. But the kingdom of God, this final kingdom, not a kingdom of this world, but the kingdom to come will stand and will last forever. Verse 44, it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms that has come before, and it shall stand forever. And there were loud voices in heaven. Loud voices in heaven. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. So the truth, my friends, about the kingdoms of this world, they have risen and they have fallen. But the truth, my friend, there is a kingdom. There is a kingdom that is coming that will last forever. And our God, who is the king of kings, he will reign forever. So as we live in this world, a world of crises, a, a world of concern, a world of conflict, as we live in this world, a, a world of poverty, a, a world of famine, as we live in this world, a world of uncertainty, newborn babies being born and not so sure the completeness of life they will have, as we live in this world full of devastation, full of fear and not of hope, as we live in this world. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And verse 16 and 17 says this, For our comfort and for our confidence, for the Lord himself, not someone else, not Gabriel, not some angel, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord in this kingdom that will last forever. For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. You may ask the question, well, well what is he going to say when he shouts? I'm not so sure what he's going to say when he shouts, but, but I'm just going to use my imagination. He's going to say the word enough. Enough of the suffering. Enough of the famine. Enough of the poverty. Enough of the war. Enough of the sickness. Enough of the death. Enough. For the Lord himself shall descend. With a shout, with the trumpet of God and the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall arise, and those that remain on our life will be caught up together to meet him in the air. And there we will be forevermore in a kingdom that will last forever. Kingdom of all kingdoms. King of all kings. Our Lord of all lords. Enough, he will say. I cannot wait for that day. How about you? I cannot wait when the history books would have been closed. I cannot wait when there's no more sickness. I cannot wait when death will die. I cannot wait when there's no more conflict. I cannot wait to look up into the sky and this stone that has been cut out from the mountain as the prophecy indicates that will come and crush all kingdoms that have come before it and will set up the everlasting kingdom which is the kingdom of our God. I cannot wait. What about you? What about you? 
What about you? Our Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for the prophetic word of your scripture. We're just so thankful for the true word of your scripture. We're even thankful that even the history books can confirm what you have said thousands of years ago. And oh God, we recognize that kingdoms have come up in this world and kingdoms have fallen. But we look forward to your coming kingdom that will be the kingdom of all kingdoms and you will be the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Our Heavenly Father, even so, come quickly and say enough. This is our prayer. In your matchless name, amen. Sorry. We have some flyers in case that you want to invite your friends for the rest of the week. We have flyers. If you need some to give to your friends, they will be available at the end of the service. Please ask. We have enough for, for you if you want to give it to your neighbors or colleagues or friends. Don't hesitate to take some of them. Also, remember that uh, we have a QR code 
you can read it now, and then you have a section for questions. You have also there for any comment. If you have a, a specific prayer request, also there is a space there. And also for some topics that will be interesting for you. If you want a different topic, there is also a possibility then. Please give, give us a feedback about tonight and also uh, about other topics that could be interesting for you. Please read the QR code and then you have a space there for your comments and questions. Uh, remember that tomorrow at the beginning we will be responding some of the questions. If you send your questions, tomorrow we will be responding some of them. Every night we will have that possibility, but if you have the QR code, you can use it tonight or tomorrow to send uh, your questions. Remember that tomorrow is a little bit different from the rest of the week. Tomorrow we are not starting at 7, but 7.30. Why? Because tomorrow is the car-free day in Brussels. Then it's not possible to enter before 7 to the city if you are coming from, uh, uh, by car. Then we will do it 7.30 to give time for people that is coming from outside to be on time. Then tomorrow 7.30, but from Monday on Friday it will be at 7. Then tomorrow you remember that this, well, if you come at 7, it's okay also for us. It's not a problem, but we will start 7.30. The rest of the week we will start at 7 p.m. Then, uh, yeah, and also tomorrow, the topic of tomorrow is the truth about the future. If you are worried about the future, if you have questions, how is the future, what is, will come, then come tomorrow, we will have a very interesting presentation about the future. And now, you are all invited to join us. We have some refreshments for you outside, then please Go oh, and, and uh, participate. We have some time also to discuss about what we have learned this evening. And go and take advantage of the refreshments that the youth have prepared for us for this evening. Thank you for being here this uh, evening. And hope to see you tomorrow and the rest of the week. And remember, tomorrow 7.30 and from Monday 7 p.m. God bless you. <laughs>